Get set, get ready. Here comes rough and ready. They're tough and steady, always rough and ready. They sometimes have their little spats, even fight like dogs and cats. But when they need each other, that's when they're rough and ready. <laughs> Hey, Roth, listen to this. UFO sighted. Saucer-shaped ship seen by sheep herder. Police swamped by telephone calls. Hey, Roth, what's a UFO? Not a UFO, you goofo. That's UFO, unidentified flying object. Oh, any dope would know that. Well, here's one dope that didn't. Gee, maybe it's a real flying-type saucer. Don't go away. <laughs> They don't call me ready for nothing. Oh, brother. <laughs> Where'd you get that space cowboy outfit? I want it on Captain Comet's television show for writing the best poem. You want to hear it? Not especially. Well, you're gonna. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Way out there in space so far. I'll see you every night, you know, on Captain Comet's TV show. Wouldn't you know it? He's a poet. Boy, when those flying saucer fellers come, Already I'll be ready already. I'll blast him. Steady, ready, and put that squirt gun down. There's no such animal as a flying saucer. Here's a flash. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Rumors of mysterious objects flying through the sky are not true. And reports of a strange saucer-shaped ship are also untrue. Officials say there is no such thing as a flying saucer. You heard what the man said, Reddy. No flying saucers. Well, I don't like to argue, but that's no bicycle streaking through the skies right now. In fact, if I wasn't afraid of being laughed at, I'd say that was a flying saucer. It does look like something out of space or out of a nightmare. Sheesh. And what's this? Creatures from another planet. And these creepy creatures are spying on our world. And what are they looking for? <laughs> well, according to my interplanetary dictionary, these spacemen have come to Earth to find two typical Earth people to take back to their planet. It looks like they're leaving. But wait, the spaceship's turning around. They've spotted something on their viewer. And look who they've got their eyes on. Oh, I was afraid of that. Ah, don't worry, Ruff. If one of them flying-type saucers comes around here, boy, I'll disintegrate them. One of these days... Oh, you space-happy. Poor Reddy. This kid'll believe anything. Well, pleasant dreams, fellows, but this is no dream. It's more of a nightmare. Uh-oh, the spaceship is turning on some kind of powerful rays. Oh, no. Poor Reddy. Poor Ruff. And away they go. It looks like Ruff and Reddy are not long for this world. But where is this mystery ship taking our friends? And why? We'll find out soon when we see Night Flight Fright. Last time we saw Ruff and Reddy, they were sleeping peacefully when a mysterious flying saucer from outer space manned by two strange mechanical spacemen, beamed a powerful ray at our sleeping heroes, pulling them up into their flying saucer. And away to outer space. We hope Rough and Ready are ready, because things look mighty rough. Gee, Ready left the television on again. He never gets enough of these space shows on TV. TV? Reddy! Hey, Reddy! Reddy, wake up! Reddy, look! Hey, 
Ain't the Captain Comet show on kind of early? That's no TV show. We've been shanghai Shanghooed? shanghai captured. While we catnapped, we got kidnapped. I'm getting out of here. Come on, Ralph. Ready, don't. Ready, while still half asleep, has opened the ship's door and stepped out into space. She. Ready. Ah, uh, looking for me? Come back here. Boy, the moon's out kind of early today. Well, that's not the moon, you goon. Th that's the Earth. Golly, it's a small world, ain't it? The Earth? Well, what's it doing way down there? And what am I doing way up here? Steady, ready. Oh, I wonder where they're taking us. Uh-oh. Blast off, ready. Hey, Ruff, will you come back here? I was talking at you. Where's your polite? Ixnay, Ixnay. Ixnay? You know I don't speak a word of Spanish. Ooh. in the control room. Yeah? But if we're in here, and them spacemen are out there, then who's flying this contraption? Nobody. The ship's out of control. Have no fear. Commander Reddy is in the driver's seat. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Push this button, and away we go! Uh-oh. Reddy must have pushed the wrong button. The ship's falling. Some days, it just don't Hey, to get out of bed. Poor Rough and Ready. They're in double trouble. Millions of miles from home and falling helplessly through space. How will they get out of this spot? Be sure and look for the next episode of Rough and Ready called The Whamma Bama Gamma Gun. Don't miss it. <laughs> When we last saw Rough and Reddy, they had been captured by the spacemen and the flying saucer. But Reddy broke loose and rescued his pal, Ruff. They ran into the saucer's control room and locked the strange saucer men out. But then they were locked inside, and the flying saucer went out of control. Poor Ruff and Reddy. They sure have their ups and downs, falling helplessly through endless space. But wait, something's happening. Something good for a change. The spaceship seems to be leveling off, on the level. Gee, Reddy, you didn't tell me you could fly a flying saucer. Uh, you didn't ask me, Ruff. Whew, it's getting mighty hot in here. Something's burning. Yeah, well, it's probably our friends in the aluminum underwear. Boy, are they hot under the collar. But things will get hotter, for the spacemen are using a secret weapon, the Whamma Bamma Gamma Gun to burn through the metal door to the control room. Phew, the heat's on now. Ready, look. Oh, oh, what are them creepy critters up to, Ruff? They're up to no good. They burned a hole in the door. You're scared, Ready? No, but I'm scared I might get scared. You guys, reach for the skies. You can't outsmart old Reddy. I ain't as stupid as I look. Steady, Reddy. Don't overdo the bluff stuff. I'll give them guys a hot foot with their own hot rod. At this moment, the flying saucer has sailed beyond the forces of gravity. Everything is now weightless. Objects not fastened down will float in the air. As you can see, the Mecho men and Reddy are not fastened down. And away they go. Hey, Ruff, I feel kind of empty, especially in the head. Me too, Reddy, but keep those disc jockeys covered. As Ruff floats up, he grabs a lever. The lever goes up too. It looks bad, but it's really good, because this lever opens the escape hatch, just as the weightless spacemen float up and out into space. 
luckily, Reddy used his head and stayed inside. But the Mecho men are not so lucky. They float off into endless space. Sheesh. You can put your arms down now, fellows. But then, just as suddenly as they went up, they go down. Get off me, my fine fat friend. Gosh, that gravity feller must be back on a job. Right, Reddy. The flying saucer speed is picking up fast, which means the spaceship is approaching a planet. It looks like the dreaded planet Mooney Moola. Uh, that's aluminum spelled backwards. Already, powerful rays are pulling the saucer ship forward at terrific speed. Our heroes push and pull like crazy, but the mystery rays are too powerful. Fasten your safety belts. Cross your fingers. Suddenly, a hole opens, and the ship vanishes inside. And the planet, Mooney Moola, closes on our friends, rough and ready. How will they get out? Watch for the mastermind of Mooney Moolah. Don't miss it. Last time we left our flying saucer beyond the pull of gravity with our pals Rough and Ready floating around helplessly when Ruff pulled a lever, opening the escape hatch, and their captors floated off into space. But their troubles really began when they sighted a strange planet of metal called Mooney Moola. A powerful ray pulled their flying saucer closer until the planet opened up and swallowed them alive. At least, I hope they're alive. Let's go inside the planet of Mooney Moola and see. It's kind of dark inside this old planet, ain't it, Ruff? You got a match, Red? Match? Match. There you are. Uh, wherever you are. Yow! I mean, yow! That's no candle, you firebug. That's my finger. Excuse me, Ruff. Shh. Ready? I think we got company. Yeah. Two's company and ten is spooky. Wow. It's a whole army of Mooney Moola men. In case you came in late, Mooney Moola is aluminum spelled backwards. Poor rough and ready. I never saw so many twins in all my born days. Ooh. Well, here we go again. Well, as Confucius say, when you gotta go, you gotta go. And as things go, rough and ready are gone. They're being taken to the headquarters of that mastermind, the metal monster of Mooney Moola. The master of all Mooney Moola men. Or in Earth language, the big thinker. Something tells me the big thinker is a stinker. A greetings, Earth people. Welcome to Mooney Moola. Do you see what I see, Reddy? I say it. I just hope it don't see me. I release the prisoner. Oh, visitors. Step forward, earthworms. Uh, Earth people. I've been expecting you. Welcome. Be my guests. But don't try any monkey business. We'll be good friends. As long as I need you. Sheesh, what a grouch. Well, this guy is two-faced, and that's one face too many. Let's face it. I plan to build an army of robots, exactly like you two Earth people. But, Your Honor, Your Majesty, I'm not a people. I'm just a plain old dog. Honest. Listen. Woof! See? And I'm just a cat. A little old kitten, see? Meow! Get the picture? Quiet. With millions of robots just like you, we will invade your Earth. The big thinker is a bigger thinker than I thought. He's taking the prisoners away to the duplication chamber. The first step in his plan to invade the Earth. Are you scared, Reddy? No. I'm just scared again that I'll get scared again. The duplication chamber is a long assembly line where Mooney Moola mechanical monsters are mass-produced by the millions. At the present, it looks like Reddy's future is a thing of the past. Poor Reddy. Poor Ruff. Keep your chin up, pal. Poor Reddy. They're really putting the squeeze on him. Don't miss The Mad Monster of Mooney Moola, the next episode in the adventures of Ruff and Reddy.
Let's go a few zillion miles out into space to the mystery planet Muni Mula, where the big thinker, the two-faced mastermind of Muni Mula, has captured Rough and Ready and is using them as models to make an army of robots to invade the Earth. Meanwhile, back at the duplication chamber, Reddy is caught between an irresistible force and an immovable object, the Big Squeeze. Let's hope Ruff has the usual nine lives. He'll need them around here. the aluminum men of Muni Mula start production of an army of robots to invade the Earth. Well, what do you know, Ruff? Didn't hurt a bit. Me neither. But what's this silly-looking thing? Beats me, kiddo. There's one on each side. Crazy, huh? Yes, Reddy. Crazy. Crazy like a fox. The big thinker's evil plot thickens as the robots go into full production. Now that the molds have been made, Ruff is no longer needed. And neither is our pal ready. And now the business of stamping out exact copies begins with the lowering of huge blocks of metal into position. Now the giant duplicator goes to work. And presto, a solid metal duplicate of ready. Faster and faster, the duplicator stamps out more and more copies of Reddy, while another machine goes to work pressing realistic copies of Little Ruff. The real Ruff and Reddy stand by and watch helplessly as the mechanical Ruffs and Reddies are being turned out like hotcakes. Next, they go into the paint shed and come out looking more like Ruff and Reddy than Ruff and Reddy look like Ruff and Reddy. Finally, the mechanical robots stop for their most important part, a mechanical brain. This patented thinking cap gives some intelligence to the robots, and a robot rough is born. It looks like another me. And rough, looky. If I didn't know that I was me and he was him, I'd swear that he was me and I was him. We gotta stop this nonsense. We're being outnumbered. But how? I'll show them a thing or three. They got my dandruff up. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it when I holler, hold it. Ready? Look out. But Ruff's warning came too late. The thinking cap has done its work. And Ready now has a robot brain. He will think and act like a robot. He will be a robot, unless Ruff can help in some way. Watch for the next episode in the adventures of Ruff and Reddy called The Hocus Pocus Focus. Don't miss it. The Big Thinker, the mastermind of Mooney Mula, is building an army of mechanical robots, exactly like Ruff and Reddy, to invade the Earth. When the real Ruff and Reddy tried to stop production, Reddy was accidentally exposed to the cosmic ray thinking cap. And he now has a robot brain, which makes him walk, act, and think like a mechanical robot. Poor Reddy. Reddy! But Ruff isn't getting through to Reddy, because Reddy's brain is under the control of a big thinker. What happens to Reddy shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> According to my English Mooney Moola dictionary, that means scram, bub. <laughs> oh, what he said. You can't keep a good man, a uh, cat, down. But how can Ruff help his pal Reddy with this tin soldier standing guard? Only the robots can get by the Mooney Moola guard. 
but it looks like Ruff is pulling a fasty. Or is he? English translation, there's something rotten in Mooney Moola. I thought that was the real Ruff. And he spotted Reddy. Reddy? Psst. Reddy. It's me, your pal, Ruff. Don't you know me, Reddy? Reddy doesn't seem to know from nothing. He's confused. And who isn't? Which one of these Reddies is for real? But Ruff has a plan. There's one way to tell the phonies from the real Reddy. friends to the end, but this may be the end. They're being watched by the Hocus Pocus Focus. This flying private eye keeps an eye on everybody for the big thinker, and he issues an order. Now hear this, now hear this. Bring the Earthlings to me. Earthlings? Oh, he means us. I repeat, bring the Earthlings to me! Little Ruff forgets that what? Reddy is not himself, but a mechanical robot. Reddy, put me down! Now Reddy must obey the commands of the big thinker. Poor Ruff, turned in by his best friend. Don't miss Mooney Mulan Mix-Up, the next episode of Ruff and Reddy.